Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Chapter 5 of the Categories, Aristotle is going to give us a much more in-depth examination of substance. And one of the key ideas, or rather distinctions, that he's going to make, which, which has a lot of implications that he draws out, is that between what he calls primary and secondary substances. So the term substance is usia, and primary and secondary, pretty straightforward in the Greek, protai, deutrai, um, just means first and second, right? So he says that, that some substances, some usiae, deserve the, the name uh, or the, the, the notion, we could say, of substance much more than others do. And to sort of jump ahead and you know, give you like a r summary right up front, there's individual things like human being or horse or tie, and then there are the classes which Aristotle calls uh, species and genera. These are actually coming from Latin terms, you know, species and genus, which are translating uh, eidos and um, genos. Um, and these, these are going to be uh, used quite a bit. So another thing I want to specify from the beginning in, in this little discussion is whatever notion you are bringing to the table about species and genus coming from classification of animals or plants or something like that, put, put that out of your mind for the time being. That won't be helpful here in part because Aristotle is using it as part of a classificatory hierarchy, but he's not doing so in exactly the same way as natural history does that, that we're introduced to in like earth science or things like that. So what does Aristotle have to say? He begins by saying um, what most deserves to be called substance is what is neither predicated, neither said. <clears throat> He's using the, the verb there, lagain, right? Um, uh, to, to say, to speak, neither predicated of a subject nor in a subject. If, and by the way, if this distinction is throwing you, I've done another discussion of that, so you should look up that video. Uh, before you, you go into this one. So what is neither predicated of, of a subject, neither said of some subject, nor in another subject. Much, much later, he will specify as well, hey, remember that in a subject does not mean present as a part of a subject, like organs are, like shoulder, elbow, in our body, because then people might say, well, those aren't really substances. He, don't worry about that so much at this point. Think in terms of what he's talking about. Individual human being, individual horse, individual piece of chalk, right? Those are substances. Those, you don't say the individual piece of chalk is in a subject. Um, it is a subject. Other things are in it, like the whiteness or the hardness, those qualities, right? Uh, which are actually essential qualities to it, I believe. Um, well, maybe not. What you, chalk comes in a number, n number of different colors. Um, in any case, we, we have a primary substance, right? And then we're going to have secondary substances. And he's going to say, um, you know, we, we can uh, talk about those as being substance in a derivative way, uh, in a way that is connected to actual substance. So he says, um, we do speak of secondary substances, those within which, being species, the primary or first are included, and those within which, being genera, the species themselves are contained. 
So this is a very important way of thinking about it. species and genera are in some respects relational terms and you could have a number of different genera stacked up quite high. In actual practice, Aristotle doesn't go quite so far with that. For example, we'll take, you know, human being. I am a human being. Presumably you're a human being unless, you know, aliens are watching this somewhere, which I suppose could happen someday. But let's assume you're a human being. So human being, individual human being on your end, human being on my end. We are primary substances. Both you and I are human beings and there is a species, human being. We use the same word um, to, to describe that, you know, uh, we, we apply that and we're part of a class. That is what Aristotle calls a species. Now, the, the species, human being, is part of a larger genera. And what is that genera, or what is the genus, rather? What is that genus? That is animal. Now, I know that we would break it down and we'd say, well, we're in the family of hominids, and those are part of, you know, um, apes or whatever, whatever we classify ourselves into. Um, I'm a little bit hazy on that. And then those would be mammals and then animals way, way up there. That's fine. Then you just have more genera stacked up on top of each other. The basic idea is this. The species is the first thing removed from primary substance. It's the secondary substance that encompasses individual things of that kind. Whatever else you place above that is, is a genos, and, and that has uh, multiple species within it. We can do this with tools as well, right? Our, our classification. We have a, an individual hammer and then another individual hammer, and they don't look exactly the same, but they're part of the species hammer, uh, which we ourselves have uh, perhaps come up with. I, I, you know, I don't really know exactly how Aristotle would classify this. Um, probably he would say, you know, it is, there, there's some sort of species that is somewhat natural, but it's also somewhat artificial. And then we could put it into the you know, genera of tools or instruments, or whatever else we want to call it. And you see, we can do this with lots of things. Um, chalk, right? We'll use that as, as an example again. I have uh, three pieces of chalk in my hand. You see them right there. Um, they are all within the species of chalk, and they are individual things as well. So we have um, primary substance, secondary substance, then uh, Moving on a little bit in, in the conception of this, like I put here on the board, Aristotle talks about um, the name and the definition of predicates. And this might seem a little bit confusing to you. So let's actually go over this a little bit closely. He says, it's plain that the name and the definition of the predicates can both be affirmed of the subject. So what, what's the example here? We predicate man of an individual man as the subject. We also take the name of the species man and we assert it of each individual. Or again, to use the example of chalk, right? Predicating just means we're saying of something. So we, we predicate the, the name chalk of all these pieces of chalk. And it, we can add as many as we like. Um, the species can encompass perhaps infinite numbers. The, now the definition, if we know something about the species, right? Think about a definition, not in terms of a dictionary definition, but defining the what that thing is, the essence of it. The definition is a statement of the being or the essence of the, the, the thing, the substance. So he, he says, um, here we go. Yeah, uh, ton logon is, is, is the, the definition in this case. So we might say the account, the explanation, the, the describing what the thing is. Um, those can be predicated of the subject. So if you know something, before you actually see any real chalk, let's say somebody was able to give you something like a real definition of chalk. 
not something contingent like what I write on the chalkboard with, right? But rather something that told you about the, what, what this stuff is in, in its being. Um, then you would be able to apply that to the individual pieces of chalk. That might actually help you recognize what that thing is when you encounter it. Oh, that's a piece of chalk. I know because I have learned about that species at a certain point. We might say that about various animal species. You've never seen a badger, right? Um, but you, you go and you, uh, you learn about badgers and then you, you run into one and you reckon, oh, that, there's a badger, right? Or you're uh, looking in, in you know, the forest and you happen to see some apple mint and you recognize the, uh, the shape of something minty and uh, you go up to it and you brush against it and you're like, mm, that's, that smells very different. Aha, I've heard of that. This is an individual substance. This is an instance of the species apple mint. So he talks about the name and the, de the definition of predicates. What would predicates be? Species and genera are things that are predicated of first substance. What else, though? He, he, he adds to this, when we come to things which are present or found in a subject, remember, that's part of what makes a substance a substance, that other things can be present or found in it. We cannot, at least in most cases, affirm or predicate of, of that subject. So the definition itself will in no case would ever apply. Um, for example, knowledge, right? Knowledge is in a subject, in, in our minds. But um, we can use the word, for example, so let's say I know, I know grammar, right? Um, or let's say philosophy, right? I, I understand philosophy, whatever philosophy happens to be. I want to get away from the grammar example for a bit. Um, that's knowledge that's in, in my head. And you can use a derivative term philosopher of me, the individual substance. Um, but you cannot simply, you know, predicate the, uh, philosophy in my head of me, right? Um, it's, it's a different type of relation, predication and being in a subject. So he, take, he says white, right? We can take white as an example. White is no doubt in a body and thus is affirmed of a body. For a body, of course, is called white. But the definition of white, of the color, that is, that we call white, can't be predicated of any body whatsoever. That's the definition of the color, but not of the bodies that contain the color. Yeah, hopefully you understand that distinction. Now, he also talks about... Um, another important thing, primary substances, because they are subjects, are what allow anything to exist or to have being. He, Aristotle will go on and say, you know, if there weren't primary substances, then there wouldn't be anything that could be in a substance, right? So no human beings uh, or other intelligent beings, no knowledge, because there's nothing for them to be in. Uh, if there's no things that are written upon, there's no writing, right? Uh, you know, we could go on and on and on with examples of this. Now, why is this important in terms of primary and secondary substances? Well, this implies that without individual things, there are no species or genera as substances. Secondary substances only have their being as secondary substances because of the existence of the primary substances, the subjects that they are the species or genera of. So no human beings, no species of human being. Now you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense. What if we, you know, just kill, well, let's talk about the dodo, right? Um, Perhaps we, uh, uh, you know, still classify things as the dodo bird, even we think, even though we think that all of them have been killed off. Um, yes, you're right. We do have something like a mental construct, um, and, and we can even like you know look at the DNA sequence of extinct creatures and all of that sort of stuff. But that is not the same thing as what Aristotle is calling a species. That's something that describes the species, 
Uh, it might even be part of its, its definition, as he's calling it, or, or account, but it's not the species itself. So hopefully that clears that up. Now, another thing that he says that's really interesting is that species is better called substance than is genus. Why? Because species is closer to the individual things. As a matter of fact, Aristotle will go on to say in that, that, that discussion that um, individual things to species have the same sort of relation as species do to genera. So think of species as being like classes of things and then genera as being higher level classes of classes. Um, so why is a species you know, more substance than, than a genus is? Well, not only is it closer, it's also more informative. As Aristotle says, if somebody asks you, well, what is this thing that you're looking at right here that's talking to you on, on, on this video? And you say, well, an animal. That's not very descriptive, is it, right? It is true, I'm an animal, um, but that doesn't tell you an awful lot about what this thing is. And so Aristotle says, man or human being is a much better descriptor. It's, it's more informative. It tells you more. It, we might say in our contemporary parlance, it conveys more information about the thing. The last thing that I want to say here about this distinction between primary and secondary substances is that Aristotle stresses that a primary substance denotes a unity. There is some sort of one thing, right? We could have a number of different primary substances, but they're all each one thing. So again, the chalk, right? This piece of chalk is not this piece of chalk. There's not a hell of a lot going on with chalk, right? There's not a lot of you know, great information to convey there. Um, it's not like human being or something like that, but they're not the same. We put them together and now we have a, a many, right? Uh, secondary substances are by their very nature a many or a multitude. I, I suppose the only possible case in which that would not be the, the case would be if there was only one piece of chalk left in the universe or one human being in the universe, in which case the genus, or not the genus, the species and the individual would essentially, you know, be the same thing. But, but, it, but they're not, though, because an individual human thing is not the same thing as the species human being. At least we could conceive of other human beings existing, or we could remember that they had existed in, in the past. So, Hopefully, that helps you understand this, this uh, relationship between what Aristotle is calling primary substances and secondary substances, individual things that exist, and the classes, the, the species and genera that associate or, or, or collect up those things.